sainted women. Sainted women. Sainted women who prayed. And the young women would want to look like and be like them. And because their character was in place. Yeah. And they were all right making sure that we dressed appropriately yeah. coming in the house of God. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't about tight clothes and G-strings. Uh-huh. Hems too high or too low. It was about the sanctity of our hearts. Because we wanted what they had. We wanted anointing. We used to chase anointing, son. We chased it. We chased it. We chased it because they could just stretch out the hand yeah, Lord, yeah, Lord. and change atmosphere. Yeah, 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 <laughs> they would just sit in there and say, oh, ha, ha, oh, God. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah. Come, yeah. In yeah. Come in the room. Yeah. Come in the room. Come in the room. Come in the room. Come in the room. Yeah. 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 Where are we? Where are we now? Yeah. Waiting yeah. on somebody to pray us through yeah. when yeah. he's yeah. sitting right inside yeah. of you. The hope of glory. Our power is inside of you. The healer, the creator lives inside of you. The way maker lives inside of you. He's right there. He didn't go anywhere. Just put your hand right here. Know ye not your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit in God that created all things. Look around you. We're in the season of all. That means that heaven is open. Waiting for you to say something. Waiting on you to give God a command. And you sit silent because you will let the enemy law on you. The law you were asleep. It's okay, believer. He called us in. <laughs> Jesus called us in. So you can recognize again who you are. In the inclusion of God with the Gentiles. He included us. He included us and grafted us in. Yes. Isaiah 56 verses 1 through 8. There's a clear design that God had. And he had it always from the beginning to bring others. Look at the next one beside you. He, he always had in his mind to save you. Yeah. Tell him always, always. Oh, Tell him it's not a mistake. It's not help to stelter. It's, it's, it's not a lost fate or a lost memory. No. God always had in mind to save you. But do you absolutely think this is all God can say? Do you think that's it? Do you think just saving you, God is through saving? No. I'm waiting on it. Do you think God got some more he needs to say? Absolutely. And it's up to us to make sure that we understand the clear design for the human race. The clear design for the human race is that every man and woman and boy and girl has an opportunity to receive him yeah. as their Lord and Savior. Yeah. What would your community and your family, your family function be like? What would your family reunion look like if everybody was saved yeah. and sanctified? Cousin Jack and, and, and Aunt Mamie. Uh -huh. What would it be like if we were all saved? We're here to be a mirrored example of what heaven should look like. Uh -huh. We have to do the work. We have to do the work because your family is a mirrored example of what heaven is supposed to look like. Where we all get to heaven. Yeah. Mm. What a day of rejoicing it should be when we all see Jesus. It's not supposed to be wait till we get to heaven. No, we got to work heaven down here on earth. We got to pray until do you the Lord he has given you power to change the atmosphere. Why aren't you using it? Mm -hmm. oh my God. Huh? Because you've been too far from the altar, oh too far from your prayer life. Huh? Oh when you get in prayer, when you get in intercession, the Holy Spirit will direct you and say, now throw your hands up, look up. Huh? The storm is coming this way. I want you to turn it eastward, move it back. You can see with the Holy Spirit. You won't just let a tornado sit down in here and just tear up everything and attack the houses of the saints. No, that is your authority. You stand like God taught you to stand. You are 
the mirror image of Jesus Christ. When he saw a storm, what did he do? Peace! Be fair! Why aren't you exercising your power? You are salt and light in this region. And why aren't you salt and light? And your light needs to shine awesomely bright. Take it out from under the bushel. Take it out from under the cover. And be who God created you to be. Baby, this region has somebody when they have you. Your neighborhood is blessed because you're there. Do you know a storm can come down your street and tear up stuff and wreck houses? No, he has to ask permission. I, I Back up in the name of Jesus. I see you gathering. Move. Move now in the name of Jesus. I see you gathering. I command death not to be in the storm. No destruction in the storm. No death in the storm. In the name of Jesus. Dissipate. Stop and desist in the name of Jesus. Use your authority. Gabriel the angel told him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My God. Huh? My God. Gabriel the angel told him that, <laughs> that there shall be a performance of those things. Gabriel said to Mary, He shall be great. He said, The baby you got, he shall be great. And he shall be called the son of the house, and the Lord God shall give him the throne of his father, David. Saints of the Most High God. He said, greater, greater works shall ye do than I. Mm. And that greater, it means we are compound together. Where he was one, we are thousands. We are thousands upon thousands upon thousands all across the globe. The body, the joint body of the Lord Jesus Christ, each joint supplying. No, no, no. It, it, it is not about one individual. It's about us knowing how to work together. It's about us being sagacious. We have to be sagacious. We got to be discerning people. We got to know how to discern in the Holy Spirit. You said, well, I don't know. No, no, no. No, yes, you do. Jesus is living inside of you. Uh -huh. You got to know through. And, and, and how do we know this? It's because one, we're taught in Bible class. Yes. Two, we're taught in Sunday school. Three, we exercise what we are taught on the altar. Yes. We pray until God says, now hear this, watch that. Sometimes all he just says is look. Mm -hmm. right. That's all you need to do. Right. You need right. to learn how to follow the lead of the Holy Spirit. Yes. That's just sermon. Yes. You ain't got nothing to say, just say, look. And he says, shh, 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 shh. Just, I just want you to see. Uh, say to the most high God, we have to be the sagacious church, the church that discerns, that absolutely mentally understands the judgment of God. Judgment doesn't always mean fire and brimstone. It means having good wisdom about what to do, when to do, and how to do what needs to be done in the moment and the time. The church cannot be called simple. It cannot be called ignorant. It cannot be called slow. It cannot be called a blockhead. It cannot be called stubborn. It cannot be called selfish. It cannot be called crazy. No, by no means, because Christ is the head, the head of the church. Huh? He told his apostolic brothers that he made and called apostles. He said, I don't know why you don't understand this, but when he started talking to them, he said, you're like blockheads. It's hard to get information into you in the capacity that you believe. Do you believe that God is able? Yes. Oh, no, not just to get you out of house. He's able in any capacity. If you can come in your life, your God is able. Look at them and say, he is able. He is able. And we have stepped away. We have stepped too far away from who he has called us to be. The New Testament talks to us about salvation over and over. And that's why oftentimes the gospel, the gospel is not a message that is a demand anymore. Mm -hmm. Nobody is making a demand to make sure that we are witnessing about the death, burial, 
and resurrection and ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Very few times do we visit the blood yes. and talk about the power and the efficaciousness of the blood. Uh -uh. Very few times do we really go into deliverance. Uh -huh. That people really come broken but go home healed yes. and delivered. Yes. Very few receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit at yes. the altar. Ah, your courtier, see my shooter. You know why? Because there's a certain messages when you preach the word of God, God. with faith, it ignites yeah, right. faith. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. You can't do it except you have faith to believe that God is able and more than capable to do it. We have very narrow minds. We look at the outward position of a person and we estimate and suppose that God will not do it for this one. It's because our faith level has dropped. Do you know prayer and going to Bible class and being in Sunday school, you can't afford to sleep past Sunday school. You get up and refresh yourself every day. You wash every day. You brush your teeth every day. You cleanse your body every day. You put on clean undergarments every day. You put on a clean suit or dress of clothing every day. You eat clean food every day. But when it comes to spiritual things, you are dwarfed and malnutrition. You have to understand, man can live by bread, but not by bread only. But he can live by every word of God. You have to get up in the morning and eat it. Eat the word in the morning. Get up early enough to eat the word. And then run to the car. And then go on your way. You got to get back at night. You got to get to these classes. You, I don't know who told you you were too old for Sunday school. Who told you you can only come to the major service. See, the major message is platformed on top of what the other teaching has layered down in you. And that's why you can come to a revival and get nothing. Just dry. Everything is just whizzed by you. What would I see them shouting and moving back. I don't feel nothing, ain't got nothing. What in the world is going on? It's because it's layered. God layers everything. When you look at heaven, it's layered. Twelve foundations. It's layered. Twelve gates. Three, 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 three. Everything is layered on top of layer because you become stronger and stronger. You just can't come to the big service and think you got it. milk because meat is for those whose senses have been exercised we feed you meat and you don't understand it you say I ain't getting nothing out of that it's because you ain't been to the table lately it's not the teacher's fault it's not the pastor's fault it's your fault Yes, you haven't fed your soul lately yes. in a long time. Yes, You've been missing a lot of meals. Yes, Lord. Somebody say, no, no, no. Really, how much do you weigh in the spirit? My goodness. No, no, ask them. I'm looking at you. You didn't ask them. They won't do nothing in you. You're on holy ground. They won't do nothing to you. No, no, they tell us me, you see me trying to talk to you. Come on, now, go ahead and use the stock theory. Come on. The stock said, touch him. When they ignore you, touch him. Go ahead and touch him. Touch him. Say, baby, yeah, I am touching. You're touching me. Yes, I'm touching you. Tell him, how much do you weigh in the spirit? What do like in the spirit. Nice suit. Nice Louis Vuittons. Nice Vuitton. 
nice coochie. What do you look like? In the spirit. My God. When God sees you, does he see you fully dressed? Jesus. Does he see you naked? Jesus. Does he see you blind? Needing My goodness. eyes. Saved? My goodness. My does goodness. he see you carnal? Or does he see you spiritual? My goodness. Are you more worldly than you are spiritual? My my goodness. Help us this God. is not for visitors. Help Home us God. is only for saints. Help us God. This is just a private meeting. <laughs> this is just for us. Holy Convocation Help us is not God. for visitors. Help us God. It's for the saints. Because God wants to talk to us. Amen. What do you look like in the Holy Spirit? When you planted seeds, how many people have you witnessed to? Mm -hmm. Didn't even have to all come because some plant, some water. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But God knows yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes. Who have you talked to? Yes. And whoever you talk to, have you prayed for them? Yes. Have you prayed over the seed? Yes. Are you watching for the fruit to come up? Yes. Mm -hmm. See, the only way I know it was my time to come in, but I was irritated because the saints next door kept witnessing to me. They kept on, and every time I was trying to duck it, I'd go out the back door, I'd go around the corner, um, you know, trying to keep them from witnessing to me. They'd sit on the porch and wait. <laughs> <laughs> they used to do that. Yes, ma'am. We don't do that. We don't. We yes, don't say this is my fish. We don't go fishing no more. Wow. Oh, no. God, I'm bringing this one in. Yeah, no. No, we, we don't do that. Anymore. Mm -hmm. We go on the fly. If if I'm not too busy, I pause. Jesus. I wait. Jesus. You're missing it. You're missing it. You're missing it. Because Man. the only thing, the only reason why, oh, I got the Holy Ghost. But for what reason? Wow. My the Bible says my goodness. that you might be my witness. Yes, ma'am. That you might be my witness. My God, my God. Now we, we, we say, no, no, no. I, you know, I'm busy. You know, I can't, I can't bring nobody to church. I can't talk to nobody. I, I, I got too much stuff to do. So, and then there's only certain people we want to witness to. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. We want to witness to everybody that don't have a house. Jesus. Down in the street district. Jesus. Uh, that, you know, can't even hear what we're saying because right. they're so drug infested. Right. Jesus. But we don't go witness in the boardroom. We don't witness with people who are lucid. Jesus. You know, their, their minds are not being attacked. They can understand. Right. So we, we, we pick who we're going to witness to. Yes. Yes. We're insecure in our yes. own witness. Yes. Insecurity is fear. My goodness. And this Bible says in Revelation, the fearful. And the unbelieving shall also have their part in the lake that burneth with brimstone and fire. I, 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 I would go out, you know, so let the evangelistic team, whoever showed you evangelistic team in the Bible. <laughs> no. He said, after that, the holy, that's the Bible. Yeah, he said, after that, the Holy Spirit is come upon the evangelistic team. The choir that circulates down around Christmas, going in the community singing Christmas carol. After the Holy Spirit has come on, that, that's a choral group. Or the children's department. The Bible says, after that, the Holy Spirit is come upon you. Yes. You shall yes. be my witness. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we're using the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit as cachet. Mm -hmm. uh, GQ. Uh, uh, prominent points mm. to be in the club. Do you speak in tongues? La, 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 la. Do you speak in tongues? Do, 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 do. No, 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 no. Jesus. It was for the purpose of giving you yes. power to yes, me. Yes, 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 y
But you know, I, I, I just, I'm sick. It's all right. He can heal you right now. Yes. Take me by my hand. Yes. Yes. Do you believe that he died? Yes. Yes. Do you believe that he came to save? Yes. Well, I, I remember I used to go to Sunday school, but I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know what he do. My young man, young man, not too long ago, I, I shared and said, um, you know, I, I, I have been in the gang so long, until now they call me the OG, and then I, I, um, I did a lot of things. I, I was drug addicted. I had several stints in prison. I had two strikes, and, um, and uh, if I mess up one more time, they're going to throw me in jail for life. He said, I got tired of going to prison. I just got tired. And here his family had been interceding and praying, praying, praying and interceding, save, save, save my brother. Save, save, save my brother. Save my brother. Save my brother. He would get on the phone and tell lies like he was kidnapped so that he could get money. Did all kinds of things. He heisted people. He was a robber, a bank robber. He would roll people over. He got tired of going to jail. His mother would go to court and he saw his mother aged and it pierced him in his heart because she was always there praying, hoping that he would change his life. And he went in the last time and said, I don't know, but if you can save me, save me. Yeah. He asked for the first time for yeah. a Bible. Yeah. And he had been in Sunday school as a child, but had gotten loose and gotten away. The guard hollered out, hollered out his name, and he was embarrassed because he was this tough, tough and rough guy. And, 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 and he got in his jail cell, and his Bible opened up to St. John chapter number 15. And it declared unto him, and it stood up on the page, I am the true bride. And my father is the husband, man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh it away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purchases that it can bring forth much fruit. And it just stopped. That Bible stood up in him. When he decided to turn towards God, that is the start of repentance. Yeah. That's the start to say, I'm changing my mind, yeah. changing my direction. My and saints of the Most High God, he said they would put him down in certain dungeons, in certain prisons, that there was no lights in it. It was a deep hole, and it was meant to break the soul. It was to make the breaking of the yes. soul till you were hopeless. Yes. You lost all hope. You lost everything that was associated with humanity and recovery and believing and faith. And he cried. And when God began to speak to him this, he kneeled down and asked God to save him. That man is an elder today, leading a men's department, Elder Holloway, and he has never looked back once. He talked to me and said, Pastor, I want you to know that when God saved me, he took away the drugs, yeah. took away the cigarettes, yeah. took away the appetite, yeah. took away my desire yeah. to even go back. He's yeah. not looked back. He said he told God, if you save me, I'll never look back. Yeah. I will never look back. And we hold that testimony. Do not hold the testimony. God has given you your testimony to save and to deliver, yeah. to inspire faith. Sure, there are testimonies for the vast congregation, and then there are testimonies for one on one. You gotta know when to use certain testimonies. The testimony about he brought me out and he gave me this automobile so that I could work, go to work. That's a congregational testimony. You know, he healed me. The doctor said I had cancer and only had three days to live. But that's a congregational testimony. But then there's a testimony that is so dark, yeah. so dark, and so dark, yeah. until that is a one-on-one -on -one situation. Yeah. God yeah. brings those individuals to you, and then says, tell them this one. This is what I've done for you. They need to know what God is able to do. Saints of God, saints here.
here in the body of Christ have been healed of cancer, given 72 hours to live, and God has turned it around. And all we're doing is testifying to one another. There's a whole slew of people yes. right here. Yes. They now even advertise it on television. If you got cancer, go to the cancer center. Saints of the Most High God, this is the cancer center. Amen. You have to understand, they overcame him. Cancer is a demonic spirit. It doesn't mean they have cancer because they have sinned. They have cancer because Adam and Eve sinned. You have to understand, they allowed this disease and every damnable thing that the enemy can do to come into this world. And Jesus Christ, the second man Adam, was the answer to what Satan did through beguiling Eve. Genesis chapter number 3. Verse number 15 is the answer of the second man Adam to tell them, but I've overcome the world. I've overcome everything. Now can God lie? If you say he can lie, then we need to change churches. Saints of the most high God, if he said I conquered him, then he conquered him. If he said I overcame him, then he overcame him. Ain't no need in sprinkling water and dumbing God down and sprinkling down the word of God. God can stand strong, viral, lucid, and put up his fist and say, I swear by my own self that I'm good all by myself. Saints of the most high God, you don't have to flinch. When you yes. see this Bible, you don't have to flinch. You don't yes. have to back up. You can boast on God because he's still able to do yes. exceeding yes. abundant yes. above all that we can ever ask or think. But who are you telling that to? We used to tell things about God until sometimes people were afraid. Afraid yes. of us young folks testifying about just yeah, yeah, naked, yeah, yeah. strong yeah. faith yeah. without a chaser. We yeah. told them he can cast your demons out. Yeah. Yes, we did. Yeah. If you just come with me, walk with me, and go yeah. with me. Yeah. Tonight, yeah. we'll take this situation to the altar, yeah. and God is going to yeah. change your life. Yeah. Well, can he save me? I've been an alcoholic for 38 years. That's nothing too hard for God. God can clean you up and right side your life forever. Oh, well, 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 then you know I got full blown age. We have him carried in. Mm. Send the deacons out, go get him. Bring him in here. Let him know that he's able to do it. He couldn't hardly walk, said to the deacons, pick him up and bring him to the altar. That's the reason why we have altars. These are sanctified for the purpose of slaying fatted lambs, bullocks, oxen, goats. We bring them to the altar and we send up our incense. So when you're praising and magnifying God, don't play with it. Because if you bring God in, God never comes until he wants to do something. Don't bring him in just to say, oh, we're so glad you came. God came because he wants to work. God wants to heal. God wants to save. God wants to deliver. God wants to set free. You have never heard so many hip replacements, shoulder replacements, heart problems, a dementia, Alzheimer's. I, 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 I don't know nothing about this in the old church. I don't know them walking around. I don't know this kind of church. I don't know it because they brought their to the altar and they brought them to the men and women of faith they brought them to their pastor and say if you lay hands on me I know I know God will deliver me he'll set me free no 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 Oh, no, no, doctor gave me these pills, Pastor. I want you to lay hands on them because I don't, I don't have a mind to be on this condition. I want this thing gone. Now we say people have a little something, something going on, and you know they're just going through a little something. They got a little issue. It ain't an issue. It's a demon. Yeah. Oh, we dress things 
up, sister. And when you dress it up, people live with it. Don't let them live with Satan. Don't let them live with demons. Let them put that devil on the run. When you go, they got a little, um, a little issue. No. Cast the devil out. Cast him out. Cast him out. Cast him out of your home. Cast him out of your thoughts. Cast him out the way you see God. No, God, I need you to fix my mind. I don't see you like I used to see you. I used to see you high and lifted up. I used to see your train fill the temple. If you notice, we only go so far in our services today. We only go so far. Stand up, worship leader. Stand up. It only goes so far. And you know when you hit it, don't you? You know when you hit it, don't you? Only goes so far. You know why? Because our praise leader and the worship leader and a psalmist is only permitted to go so far. Then you need to hand it off to the next level of authority. You hand it off and they take it all the way through. But no, no, no. Our pastors don't praise him. We don't, we don't praise him. We're too cute to praise him. I sit and I don't praise him. I don't even bring my Bible to the pulpit. Huh? I don't stand up and give him the glory. We don't even shout like we used to shout. The men and women of God used to shout. They used to praise him. They used to cast out devils. God has it set where you only go this high. And then the next level of authority, let the saints praise and they usher you in. Who wants a pastor that don't know how to praise him? Don't know how to clap their hands. Don't know how to stand up and give God the glory. And sitting down like prima donnas and sitting down in worship like people. Have their legs crossed, their arms folded. No, it's time to worship the King of Glory. It's time to give Him all the praise. We need a move of God in here. I brought my mama and she got stomach cancer, and I want God to come in this house and heal my mama. No, no, no. Maybe they took him only just so far. And then the men and women of God said, talk, talk, talk. And now I hear saints praise him, praise him. He's walking in, he's walking in, he's coming in the room. He's coming in the room. And we went there. You have to be ushered in. And we don't usher you in because we don't go to pray. We let the saints go to prayer, but we don't go. No, no, we don't go to prayer no more. That's for the children. No. Men and women of God, lead. You cannot lead from behind. You lead. You never see a shepherd behind the sheep. Ah, they don't know where they're going. The shepherd got to lead the flock. You got to lead them in prayer. Lead them in worship. Lead them in casting out devils. You got to lead them in giving. You got to lead them in the power of the witness. It's not a game for children. That's why Christianity is not for punks. It's not for cops. No. No, no. You got to be strong to be a Christian. Because it denies your very flesh. It denies your appetite. It denies you. And that's why the word of God says there's nothing too good. I would not give my leaders. That's Deuteronomy 8. That's number 8, 18. 18 and 19. He said, you bring your tithe, your offering, and you bring this offering and that offering, and you bring it to me. And when you bring it to me, I give it to him. And why? Because if you gave it directly to him, you would manipulate their spirit and manipulate what they preach and manipulate what they say. And if you keep preaching that preaching, 
preacher. I'm taking me and my family out. Well, go out with your raggedy self. But you cannot manipulate the word of God as a pastor. The pastor, I brought you my time. That's not biblical. You ain't brought him nothing. I brought you my offering. You ain't brought him nothing. God said everything you bring, bring it to me. Bring it to me. Give it to me. And I give it to who I want to. I'm the head of my church. Stay in Sunday school and stay in the Bible and you won't get mixed up with the erroneous, wicked doctrines of devils and demons thinking you can buy a preacher. because they said they don't give you no raise. You say, I need more money than this and quit. Oh, Pastors can't quit. That's right. That's good. God raises them. He raises them. How does he raise them? Father, now, I, I'm looking at this property. Yes. Yeah. My family has increased. We need bigger bills. I need you to change my bottom line. Ooh. 
and he increases. Yes. He increases. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He increases and he curses the hand that holds back the promise. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. And then he chastens the pastor and says, do not fear to eat out of what and where you work. That's right. Go on and pay your mortgage. Well, if I do that, they're going to pay your mortgage. Don't be afraid to eat where you labor. That's good, man. That's good, man. And you run around thinking they're being greedy. Read the Bible. Please read the Bible. <laughs> read the Bible and help you. Because when you talk against what he has said, it hurts you, not him. It's cutting your rays. It's cutting your health. And it's cutting down your lifespan. Because he tells Moses, move out the way. They're not talking about you. Get up off your knees and quit crying. It ain't about you. They're talking about me. I called you. I bless you. I bless you. Because you know, I, you know, until he set a meeting with me, oh, 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 and I'm gonna hold my tie. Oh, oh. You know what? God is something in holy convocation, isn't he? Yes, he is. Because I hear your conversation. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I hear every word. Thank you, Lord. And you're wondering why you're sick now. And you're wondering why your children are in great trouble. And you're wondering why death has started coming in your family now. It's because it's not him or her, whoever is pastoring you. That's the problem. It's you the problem. My people perish because they do not know the word. They don't know how to operate. They don't know how to bless them. They don't know the times of the season. They don't know where to step, where not to step, what to say, what not to say. You can't talk about the Lord's anointed leaders, and you can't talk about the anointed body of the Lord. Ain't nobody say, who, who told you that lie? My God, no, that's right. I know that's right. You can't talk about the anointed body of the Lord, and you can't talk about his leadership. You get into trouble. Because you are the Lord's anointed. They are the Lord's anointed. So that sh shuts gossip down, doesn't it? Come on, let's stand. My job was to make sure you get back to witnessing. Yes, Lord. Get back to your job. Thank you. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. This was not to the unsaved. This was to the church. That's good. And if any man, how do we get so far when God has to knock and ask you? Let me, let me, I'm the head of the church. How are you running this? And I'm the head of it. This is my ministry. When did it begin yours? He died for it. He died for it. If any man, that's inclusive of women, if any man will open the door, I will come in to him or her. I will sit down and make up my abode with them. Yeah. I will sit down, me and my father. 
and I'll cause them to sit down in the throne with me. Because I sit with my father in his throne. us to get us so right because he loves us. He's got so much for us. But we can't get there and have lost our purpose. Your trajectory is to hit it the mark. You can't come a little short. Hit the mark. Because everything that's in you can help you make that mark. Be honest, be integral, be authentic. Be authentic. Authentically Christian. Don't be an off shaving around Christianity. Just be. Be. The sweet ontology of God is to be, is this. I am who my Father has made me to be. Be. Don't say I can't be. You can. He wants you to be. You say the head and not the tail, but you have to live the head and not the tail. Speak the head and not the tail. Stay away from negative people. Stay away from. Them. Stay away. Change your circle. Change your circle. We're in holy convocation. We don't go back out and pick up the same mess. Change your circle. Be busy. Be busy when they call. Be busy. When you busy, then they want to give you a free lunch. Tell them I'm busy. <laughs> Be busy. Stay away from negative people and get out of that negative cycle and fly. Fly the way God has determined that you fly. And stop listening to what people say about you and hear what God is saying. Amen. 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 He said, you know, did you do your work? You know, did you get your works done? Did you get it done? You gotta hear him say, well done. Faithful, sir, faithful. Faithful means consistent. I'm about it. I'm about it. I'm about it. I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing. And when you see your brother and sister stumble, pick them up. And say, you got this. Come on, we can do it. Let's do it. But now if they want to stay down too long, tell them I'm praying for you. And are we moving forward? We're moving. Let's pray. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, a sober reflection of what we already know. And you're just reminding us. The heart of God is soul, 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 soul. God so loved the world, he gave his son to soul, 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 soul. soul. We have to get back to the business of soul, 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 soul. We have to pray until our families are saved. Pray until our neighbors are saved. Pray until our loved ones are saved, Father. Take us back to the original design. You saved us and we used to save others. We used to witness. We came to church with real early. We came before time so that we could pray, so we could hit the altar, so we could pray in the sanctuary, so we could pray with the saints. Father, souls, 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 help us to go back and get our soul. Get the soul, the way we came into this. We will ignite it. Put the fire back in our souls. 
Put soul winning back in our hearts. Put the witness back in our hearts. Help us to be builders of the faith. Builders of the ministry. Builders in the vision of God. Help us not to sit at ease and dine and just wait on a position. But know that the position means I am a soul winner. I'm a soul winner. I'm a soul winner. The pulpit of the Lord is large. It spans the globe. Every corner, every street corner, every jail cell, every way, every thoroughfare, souls, 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 we must get our work done. You said, let us pray. Because the harvest is truly, truly right. But pray to the Lord that he would send laborers, not people that sit but laborers. Yeah. Not people that just come to church, but go back out and labor and bring yeah. into. You told us through the word of God to compel men to come. Yeah. Put a press, put a push behind it. Press them to making the decision. Press them. Pray and press. Pray and press. Yeah. Oh, Father, you brought us in to remind us what our purpose is. It's souls, souls, souls. Yeah. Not to just sit in the house of God, but learn what the teachers are telling us. Learn in the Bible class. Learn in Sunday school and go out and win souls, 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 souls. We're going to be responsible for those that perish. Because there's a lot of sitting right on the bus with her. She never told me. I worked in this next cubicle with him. He never opened his mouth. I lived on their block. I saw them go to church, but I thought I wasn't even worthy to go. They never invited me. God, you saved us and gave us power to witness, to witness, to witness. And now you're having to knock on the door because we've forgotten the witness. We have the tongues, but we have forgotten the witness. We speak with tongues, but we've forgotten the witness. No testimony. No sharing about Jesus. When the markets together, thoroughfares together, business adventures together. We've been out to the theater, to the dramas, to the play. We've been invited all over the world, but we forgot in our job is souls. We build our houses and we've forgotten to build souls. We've gotten our education and our degrees, but we've forgotten to build souls. We've opened our businesses, multiple businesses and entrepreneurial ships, but we've forgotten about souls. Busy making money, but we forgot the souls. Busy being busy, but we forgot about the souls. Writing books and writing songs, and we forgot about the souls. Trying to make a hit, trying to make it happen, trying to get to the top in the rat race, but we forgot about the souls. in so that you can tweak, so that you can put us back on track, so that you cause us to get back on the path that you first designed for us. Yes. Father, Father, this diocese needs to be in a blaze, a blaze of spiritual growth and development because of soul. Prayers ablaze, altars ablaze, worship like it was today, ablaze, but higher. Yes. Take us, take us, touch our hearts, touch our hearts, touch our hearts, and do your will. You cried out to ask us to let you do your will. And we want to do your will, Father. And we 
we want you to do your will in us. Touch every anointed apostle in this place. Every anointed prophet. Every anointed evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Every anointed believer. Those that have been filled with the auspices of the Holy Spirit. Anoint us afresh. Anoint us afresh to our purpose. Anoint us afresh to the desire that God had for us when he saved us. Anoint us, those that are directors of our music and plays and all kinds of things. Anointed in sports, anointed in schools, anointed in colleges, anointed in universities, anointed in science, anointed in man. Wherever you have anointed us to be, help us to win sports. Our purpose while we were sent down and given all of these gifts and talents is because where we are, we're to influence where we are. We're to dominate where we are. We're to touch where we are. We're to affect and infect where we are. So put us back on track. Put us back on track. Put us back on track. Father, make us conscious. Conscious. Bring us to a consciousness of our responsibility to you. You saved us with a purpose. You saved us for a purpose. We have a purpose. And at the end of the day, we don't want to hear you knocking. Because we've taken charge instead of you being in charge of our lives. In Jesus' name. Take your brother and sister by the hand. Help us, Lord. We're in holy convocation.
Yes, I will. Yes, I will. I'm a 